it's me hi hi <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and happy Vlogmas Day 2. So today we are going to be figuring out if I read all the books that I wanted to read before I turned 23. And I turned 23 in July of this year, so absolute perfect time to film this video. Now my prediction is that I did not in fact read most of these books because back when I filmed this video I was heavily into the fantasy and then I jumped out of that mood for like well I've only just got back into it and as I'm filming this it's October because I'm pre-filming my vlogmas if you didn't know and um yeah so let's just uh, get right on into it I have a little system we're gonna be racking up the points of if I read the book if I DNF'd the book, <laughs> if I did not read the book, and if I'm still interested in reading the book. So let's just jump right on in. What we have is Hot Princess by Cassandra Clare. I have read. So I DNF'd this one. I have absolutely no interest in reading any more work from Cassandra Clare. It's not that I didn't enjoy Clockwork Angel because I did and I really just enjoyed Gem and Will. However, I just don't see myself picking up any more books from this author. Um, you know, she's quite big on incest and I'm not. <laughs> That's not a trope that I can say that I'm down with. But yeah, when I was reading, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Clockwork Princess which is the final book in that little trilogy I got bored I got bored and I DNF'd it and if you don't know I'm a hater I'm a Tessa hater just by human design I've talked about my hate for Tessa so many times and maybe it's not rational maybe she's just so bland that she's boring but yeah I no I DNF'd this Priory of the I'm Orange really Tree. I'm excited to get round to it. However, she is very thick. <laughs> Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I recently did an unhaul. I unhauled pretty much half of my collection. There was about a hundred books in that pile that I gave away, and I had to sit with Priory for so long that. I, I just had to sit with it. I had, I had to sit with it because I've had this book on so many TBRs in the past and I just can't bring myself to read it, but I can't bring myself to get rid of it. And now that it's come out that she's writing a sequel for an already 800 page long book, I, I'm kind of undecided on whether this is a book that I still am interested in so I feel like I need an undecided column I'm gonna throw in an undecided column just for this book it's me hi I'm the problem it's me she's a big girl this is a round then we have daughter of spoken boom by Lady Taylor another book I haven't I read I really hear many good reviews about the series However, it is something that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the... I haven't read this yet. Um, so, am I still interested in it? I did keep it. I did keep it while I was unhauling. So I'm going to say I'm still interested in it. Lenny Taylor's writing really intrigues me. I actually soft DNF'd um, Strange the Dreamer. Not because it was a bad book, but like... When I say soft DNF, I mean not the time, but I'm probably going to love this at some point, so I keep it a soft DNF, not a hard DNF. Um, her writing is absolutely gorgeous. I feel like I could enjoy this book, so I'm going to put this in still interested. Both of them, oh. in this video, I would love to read. 
both of them so we have strange the dreamer in this video and i'm still interested in reading that as well i feel like i'm more likely to read strange the dreamer um over the other book i think if there was an order that i was to get to them it would definitely be strange the dreamer and i'm kind of feeling december for strange the dreamer it gives me such a you know wintry whimsical vibe that would just fit perfectly and i actually received this book last christmas eve and i started reading it back then but i mean that just defeats the whole right book wrong time no i received that in 2020 like hmm right i'm confused on the timeline i'm confused on the timeline but I know I received this book for one Christmas Eve and then I put it back down, but I'm feeling like maybe this year, maybe this year. By Madeline Miller. I... I didn't, I, uh, I read some of this and I DNF'd it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was in the pile of books I got rid of. I just don't get the hype. I don't I don't get the hype, but you know, it's valid. If you love this book, then you are free to love it. I probably love books that you hate, so wouldn't be a me video without a big belch. A big belch that I have to edit out. Another book that I put down because I've read this one and i loved the it the gear of the witching by alexis henderson oh <sighs> oh i need to scratch my back <sighs> the year of the witching this book is absolutely phenomenal if i was tier ranking if you saw my taylor swift video it would be in first thumb phenomenal <laughs> but we're not tier ranking anyway this book is absolutely incredible i really enjoyed it if you're a beginner into the horror genre much like myself i would say this is the perfect place to start because it's not it's not extremely terrible it does deal with cults and sacrifices but even then they're not you know extreme they're not extreme um i thought this book was going to be way more brutal than it was which I was actually down for because I like that in my horror movies. But uh, yeah, I read this, absolutely loved it. I also have, oh, I also have, oh, just, you know what? I pick up a lot of books because of Meg. Uh, I've said that in so many videos in the past. But yeah, Meg, top tier book, recon recommend top tier recommendations. How me and past me are in sync. <laughs> the Secret Life of Addy the Roo. I... I don't know how I feel about this book anymore. When I was first reading it, it took a long time to actually you know, for me to be interested in Addie's character. So far, she's pretty one-dimensional. I've had this book just on hold for a long time. And it's really sad because this was a really expensive copy. I had to have this imported because uh, it hadn't, you know, come out in the UK at the time. So I had it imported. It was, in it was quite expensive. And I just haven't enjoyed it so far and after some recent controversy about how even though she's lived for like 300 years and she's never encountered anyone who isn't white that doesn't that doesn't sit well with me that doesn't sit well with me i mean how how can this woman have lived for 300 years and she's only encountered white people doesn't make sense does it make sense and that's just kind of something that makes me feel mm, that's a poor taste but uh 
yeah the writing is absolutely beautiful I just I think it's going to be one of those books where nothing happens just like plain bad heroines absolutely hate that book one star but um I'm undecided on whether I really want to go through with this again here's the thing I'm not huge on just straight up historical fiction I like historical fiction as a subgenre for like fantasy or you know Greek mythology romance from time to time <laughs> um but when it comes to straight up historical fiction and that's all that it is I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it and this book is a book that makes a lot of people cry and I picked that up for that reason but I did recently unhaul it so no I did not read this book before I turned 23 I got rid of it after I turned 23 did not oh okay so I'm talking about the night circus did you? I'm talking about the night circus by Erin Morganston I don't think this author's for me because I've dnf'd both of the books that I've had from her I just I think her writing is gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous it's Lainey Taylor level but it's not I'm just not interested in the stories that she tells and I think they're too complex and complicated for me and they're just not what I'm looking for when I was reading Night Circus I was confused and I was so confused that it took me to a place of boredom and I really wanted to love this book. I tried about four times to get into this just because I wanted to feel that love that everyone else was feeling and I don't know if that's healthy. I don't know if that's a healthy stance for me to have or for anyone to have but um, yeah, I think we need to get on board with this might be popular and everyone loves it but I don't and that's okay and I don't need to try to love it. I don't know. I just, I tried too long to love it and ended up getting rid of it. So, you know. It's so whimsical and magical and a lot of people compare this to Caraval, which... I don't think it's like Caraval at all. I love Caraval. I'm actually filming a video where I talk about this book, but... I don't see that comparison anymore. Maybe with the covers, maybe with the fact that they're both magical realism, but... By now, you should have figured out that I love witchy vibe books. So it's no surprise that I have In the Wicked Deep by Shy... Have not read it. Have not read it. I did decide to keep it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, I love witchy books. If that if it's a witchy book I'm very inclined to pick it up I'm really likely to pick it up so if you have any witchy book recommendations please let me know let me know because I love I love witchy books a little life mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even try to read this book. I got rid of it. I got rid of it. I just, it was set on myself. I can't speak. <laughs> it was, sh sh it was sat on my shelf for months and months. And I just, I felt like it was haunting me. I felt like it was haunting me much like the secret history was. And I just don't want to put myself through this. I don't want to put myself through it. It's like a modern day classic because it's high literary fiction and I just don't want to put myself through it. So I got rid of that a long time ago. <laughs> so I did not read that before I turned 23. Another book that Megan loves is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It's weird that I actually talked about the secret history uh, along with that other book because now I'm talking about the secret history in this video. 
I hated it guys I hated it I hated it I really tried I got to the 50% mark and I just had to DNF it it wasn't for me and I know that it's I know that it's meant to be pretentious it's meant to be the way that it's written but I just did not like that I did not like the pretentiousness of it um it's just not something that I can personally appreciate uh, <laughs> and so you're probably like why did you read the secret history then it's on the tin I was just curious I wanted to take another deep dive into dark academia this is one that's pretty acclaimed, it's pretty loved, and well, it's maybe the most loved dark academia of all time. So I thought, why not? And it just wasn't for me. This whole list, I've just been like, I'm so excited. I have a long story the books are just now, so. so I have read, I think, one book so far. We're currently 19 minutes in to this video and I've only read one of the books. Let them fall. Just gonna let them fall. I got the light of the unwritten for Christmas. I wasn't interested anymore, so I unhauled it. <laughs> um I'm just gonna put this in did not read because I did not read it and I unhauled it it's I'm just not I wasn't interested in it anymore which is interesting because in the beginning I was like oh my god how cool library in hell but characters that escape and now I'm just like paperback. we love a floppy paperback we do love Akita. a floppy when am I gonna get to Akita? The answer is never, okay? I put this down. It's the DNF. It's the DNF. I did not get far into this. I did not get far into this at all. Just the terminology that SJM uses, like alpha-hole? Alpha-hole. I didn't... I just didn't want to be subjected to it and now I've actually watched a few spoilery review videos and reading vlogs and I think I made the right choice <laughs> not to read them. Fun fact, I did read uh, Throne of, is it Throne of Glass back when I was in school and I hated it. That was my first little deep dive into SJM and she's just not for me. No hate if you like her, but she's just not for me. So this is another DNA. Everybody talks. Yeah, everybody loves her. Honestly, I picked it up because it has a similar um, title to Taylor Jenkins' read. I, I can't argue with my logic back then but also now i'm like why would you pick it up just because it says the seven deaths of evelyn hardcastle just because you love the seven husbands of evelyn hugo um okay obviously i was trying to be funny but i'm you're not funny um the seven deaths of evelyn hardcastle this book was really confusing for me and i ended up dnfing it I'm not doing well in this video. I am not doing well in this video at all. Reaper at the Gates by Sabata here. Do you know what? It's interesting, guys. I don't think I have it with me. No, I do. Okay. The interesting thing is, is that I'm currently reading this book. Um, I'm just gonna put this in still interested. But I'm, I'm currently reading it and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, at first, at first. Okay, so this was a soft DNF. And I put this off for months and months. Like, as I said, my fantasy mood hadn't hit. But I'm really loving it. It took me a while to get into because the font is different. 
it is different to the other books and the story is also a little bit different so it took me a while to be like huh I like this because I didn't feel like I was getting what I got from Torch of the Night I think it's called the second book the second book was my favorite I really enjoyed the first one but sequels tend to be my favorite I'm a sequels girl I don't know like shall I say it shall I say it I prefer Grease 2 to Grease 1. I also prefer the second Mamma Mia to the first Mamma Mia. But I want to say that I do love both of those first original movies. It's just, I'm a sequels girl. And I don't, I think it's because I already know the characters and I'm getting to spend more time with them. And in a sequel, it tends to go more into depth with those characters so yeah I'm a sequels girl unless it unless it's Scream if it's Scream I'm the 1997 or is it is 1996 I am the original Scream Scream 1 my favorite I need to cough I'm gonna just I'm gonna check in and then I'll come back everything seems okay I'm just a bit of a so next up we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by Chi I'm about to break some hearts. <laughs> I couldn't get into this. Much like my experience with The Night Circus, I tried very, very hard to love this book and I just couldn't. I mean, the premise was really interesting to me. It sounds fun. And I can appreciate that at some point it gets really wholesome, but it just wasn't for me. And I actually really loved Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. That was one of my favourite, favourite books of last year. Uh, so I haven't completely written off TJ Klune because st I'd still read more from him. I'm actually interested in his new book, Wolf Song, especially now that I'm in my fantasy mood again because it's me hi I'm a mood reader it's me that makes me the problem because I definitely can't stick to a TBR I mean clearly Malibu Rising. Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid that's another book that I DNF'd I was actually really sad about this because it sounds weird to say I was sad about this because the cover's so pretty, but that is one of my reasons. And of course, because I loved Evelyn Hugo. You know, I just unapologetically love Evelyn Hugo. And this book just didn't, I didn't like it. I know she was struggling to film this video because she just wants to go panic over her dog. <laughs> Well, currently my dog's okay, but when I was filming this video, she was uh, kind of ill at that time, so I was really concerned about her, and you can see me panicking throughout this whole video. I've just, I've just skipped through all of that. <laughs> and the girls are paper and fires trying to. Um, I want to get this read before the third one comes up. Girls of Storm and Shadow. Did I read it before the third one came out? No. <laughs> Have I read Girls of Storm and Shadow? Also no. I am interested in reading this. I just haven't had the right mood. I haven't wanted to read it yet. But I do still plan to. I absolutely loved the first one, obviously. He did indeed love the first one. Escaping from Houdini by Kerry Maniscalco. I talk about Kerry Maniscalco on this channel. I should just be, I should just be like a fan page for her. I mean, <laughs> last year I did talk so much about Kerry Maniscalco, but I recently got rid of the second book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I did not like it and I did try this book I'm talking about here which is Stalking, nope, Escaping from Houdini which is her other little series that starts off with Stalking Jack the Ripper which I think I got rid of that. I did enjoy it, I gave it a four stars but 
I just didn't want this series in my life anymore especially because I didn't like the other books and I didn't enjoy this one which is weird because it was on a cruise and it had like a like a traveling circus which is pretty cool and I usually enjoy that I enjoyed that within the diviners and carnival has that kind of vibe too and I just I didn't like it so I DNF'd it it's another Greek mythology book and again I don't really know too much about that but we have Circe by Madeline Miller Circe by Madeline Miller for me it read so textbook like uh so i didn't have to <laughs> glowing reviews and this is a glowing Look a glowing review on me i have a glowing review again i'm all over the place i feel like i'm about to cry cry bitch that is the bone season by Kate shannon again my best friend absolutely devoured this series and she thinks that i will love it she really wants she you to read it, it to me as <laughs> Version of the diviners but not really see that is what still pulls me in because i love the diviners i've kept this book and i still feel interested in it just because of the whole it's like the diviners even if it's not you know completely obvious so yeah they are all the books that I was supposed to read before I turned 23 and I astronomically failed. I failed at this. So I, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole books I want to read before I turn 24 because something that I've noticed about myself is that I am a mood reader and my taste changes over time. At the beginning of last year, I was a very, very much into the fantasy, and this year's been more about thrillers. Now, romance doesn't tend to fit into my life anymore. Well, <laughs> I'm not into my life. I have romance in my life, I, you know. But romance doesn't fit into my reading taste anymore i don't enjoy it so i kind of go between thrillers and fantasy and i stay with thrillers much much longer they're just quick they're easy they're palate cleansers they're fun and that's all i can say on that so maybe i will make a video of books that i want to read before i turn 24 but as of right now i i'm kind of embarrassed that i mean am i no i'm not embarrassing <laughs> okay well that is the end of this video if you enjoyed it and you're not yet subscribed come back come back because i have a lot of exciting videos planned for this month for vlogmas i am posting a video every day 25 videos in total that does mean that yes you will be getting one on christmas day ah but i'm filming these in the end of october all the way through november so i can give myself that time off during december but you'll still be getting content anyway i am just making this video longer than it needs to be so i'm gonna love you and leave you that made me sound 80 years old. I do feel 80 years old. My limbs, my legs. Tell me I am. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you tomorrow where we are going to be ranking, tier ranking, the Midnight's 3am tracks. Bye guys.